So we're going to get started. We are going to be covering standing postures today. And because there are so many standing poses, the, um, the, I like to categorize these into two different types of um, positions. So we have a front stance position and a side stance position. So with front stance, which is what we're going to be covering today, side stance will be next week. Uh, with the front stance position, uh, it's talking about the direction and the position of our hips. And with these poses, we're going to be keeping our hips facing the front of the mat, hence front stance. And then side stance will be the side of the mat is where our hips are going to be facing. So we're also going to have a staggered foot stance, and I'll kind of go through that. Uh, we will also be doing some other poses that don't fall into that same category, but are still a front hip position. Um, so we're still facing that short um, end of the mat. We'll also do a review of our sun salutations. So um, if you did have any questions or didn't know which questions to ask last time, sometimes when we're first learning something, we don't know what questions to ask. Um, but then as you continue to go through it, the more experience that you have, that's when those questions do come up. So as we go through that and review that again, um, we'll take some time to answer any questions that you might have and get some clarity on the poses or the transitions and um, what you should be feeling, et cetera. So um, hopefully you'll have ample um, time to review and listen to parts of the practice and as we're continuing on with these, these practices, you'll start to notice that like the, even though I'll break up the practices and then pause for these moments to kind of talk and discuss about the postures, as we continue through this course, you'll start to notice that it's going to be a little bit more of a flow without as much of those punctuations um, at the end of those postures. Um, that hopefully that will address all these questions as we come up, but then it'll start to feel a little bit more natural to continue on. So if you're used to a traditional class at a studio, we do not normally stop in the middle just to discuss. Um, you'll start to feel that effect towards the end of the semester. But right now, as we're kind of just laying the foundation, it's really important that we um, are super clear on what it is that we are doing and so we can build upon that. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start off. We're going to come into our child's pose. So starting in child's pose, your knees can be separated or together, but I do want your big toes to be touching. Let's bring your hips all the way back on top of your heels and your belly can come on top of your thighs if your knees are together or between your thighs if your knees are apart. So we're gonna bring our forehead down towards the ground and the arms are either forward or down by your sides, depending on what feels best for you and your body. I just want you to take a few of your deepest breaths here. When we come into this child's pose position, it invites us to breathe into a different part of our body, which is our backside. We breathe into our low back, imagining that we still can inflate and expand. And then find that sense of ease and release as we exhale. And then we can allow the breath to travel up the back to about the mid back where just above the kidneys, we have the adrenal glands that sit like little tiny buds on top. And these adrenal glands are responsible for our adrenaline, our epinephrine and norepinephrine, a lot of the um, high energy, high demand, high stress um, organs. And it's important that we breathe into and just feel like we're cleansing this area, especially as we start to come into those sensations of adrenal fatigue and just burnout. And then allowing yourself to breathe into that space between the shoulder blades, the back door of your heart and feeling how those shoulder blades can move. 
So using that breath to guide the shoulder blades apart on your in-breath and guiding the shoulder blades back into place on the out breath. And now I want you to take another breath into the very back of your neck at the base of the skull into the cerebral cortex. And this is a very high charge point where a lot of thought processes and connections start to happen. And just important just to feel the breath moving into that area. and just exhaling it out. Good, then rising up onto all fours, come into a tabletop position. Let's bring the knees directly underneath the pelvis so that the thighs are fully vertical and your feet are gonna be right behind your knees. So take a peek and make sure that they disappear. Good, behind those knees. And then bring yourself back into that tabletop shape, creases of the wrist parallel to the front edge of the mat. Fingertips are spread. Draw the navel in towards your spine. Let's inhale into your cow pose. Tail flips up, heart shines forward, lift the head, smile. Good, and then exhale, round your spine into a cat stretch. Pull the navel in, really push into your hands, knees, and tops of the feet. Inhale and open up. Feel the collarbones widen as your shoulder blades slide back, cow. Good, exhale, round the spine into your cat. Pull up and in, really focus on the lower abdomen. So the belly pulling in, stretching up the low back. Inhale and open up, finding your cow. See if you can find length and then flip the tail and crown up. And then exhale, round the spine again, pulling up and in. Stretching through the back body, but engaging the front body. Inhale, open up. And exhale, round and curl. Good. Last one, inhale, open up. Feel the collarbones spread wide, a little bit wider, Leslie. There we go, nice. Good, and then exhale, round the spine, pull the navel in, squeeze, nice ream. Inhale and find your neutral spine. Let's exhale, send it back into child's pose for a moment. You're gonna walk your hands over to the right. Good, stack your left hand on top of the right and then shift your hips over to your left foot. There we go. Good, now head goes in between your arms and then lean into your left side body. Breathing into those left ribs and feeling that big side body stretch, some length. Good, then walk the hands back in through center and then move the hands over to the left, right hand on top, line up the fingertips and then see if you can move your hips to your right foot, right heel as you stretch and lean into your right side body. Head between the arms, breathing in and out through the nose. And feel free to every once in a while to breathe out through the mouth and just release. Good, walk the hands back in through center. We're gonna rise up onto all fours and come into our downward facing dog. Curl the toes under, send those hips back. Really press your chest and shoulders back so they're moving your heart towards your legs. Let the head hang down and maybe shake it yes or no. And then lift up onto your tippy toes, coming up tall. Exhale, bend your right knee, dig the left heel down. Inhale, lifting up on tippy toes, straightening out the knees. Exhale, left knee bends, right heel presses down. Inhale, coming up nice and tall. Exhale, right knee bends, left heel presses down, maybe peeling the toes away from the floor. Inhale, lifting up tall, and then exhale, pressing down through right heel, Bend the left knee, and then maybe those right toes peel away as well. 
Good. Inhale, lifting up on tippy toes. Exhale, bend both knees. Press your belly to your thighs. Tail is high. Chest reaches back. Your head goes between your arms. Good. And then lower your knees down to the floor and rest into your child's pose again. Breathe here. And just find that place of rest. So I want to share with you a quote from Melody Beattie that says, few situations can be bettered by going berserk. It was the philosopher Michael Zimmerman who told the story of being a boy in school when someone passed him a pair of Chinese handcuffs a seemingly innocent thimble-like casing with an opening at each end. It was passed to him without a word. And of course, through curiosity, he slipped his left forefinger in one end and his right in the other. Mysteriously, what made them handcuffs was that the more you tried to pull your fingers out, the tighter they held you. Feeling caught, he panicked and pulled harder. The small cuffs tightened. But suddenly it occurred to him to try the opposite. And as he leaned his fingers into the problem, the small casing slackened and he could gently and slowly work his fingers free. So many times in life, our pulling in panic only handcuffs us more tightly. In this small moment, the philosopher is a small boy reveals to us the paradox that underscores all courage, that leaning into what is gripping us will allow us to work our way free. I want you to keep this story with you as we go throughout the practice. And I'll remind you of when it might be most relevant. But for now, take another full breath in wherever you are. Exhale the breath out and then inhale, rise up onto all fours. Let's take it back into downward facing dog. Toes curl, hips lift, send them way back. Walk your big toes together. And then with your next in breath, raise your right leg up to the sky behind you. Down dog splits. Reach the leg up as tall as you can let it go, feeling like the leg is like an antenna. Start to circle your right ankle around. Now your head is going to still be pressing back between your arms. And then maybe your left heel is coming down towards the floor, or you might still be up on your left tippy toe with a bent left knee. Circle around in the other direction. Good. And then release the right foot down next to the left. Inhale, raise the left leg up towards the sky, reaching it nice and tall. And then circle your left ankle around. Circle around in the other direction. And release the left foot down to the mat. Let's walk our feet forward, looking at your hands. Bring your feet to the top edge of the mat. Feet are gonna be about hips distance apart. Toes are facing forward and parallel. Knees bend, belly touches thighs. Let the head hang down. We're just gonna take a few moments here. Your hands can either be resting on the floor lightly. Maybe the hands are on your shins. Let's see if you can get that belly and thigh connection as you pull the weight forward into your toes and then let the head drop. Then move your hands to the front of your shins or your knees. Lift yourself up to a flat back halfway up. See if you can pull your belly button in and imagine that you're in your tabletop position. Slide your shoulder blades onto the back. Good. And then exhale, slide the hands down, bend your knees, fold in half. Again, inhale, rise up, flat back halfway. 
feeling that strength in your back. Good. See if you can keep that weight forward in your toes. That's going to turn on those hamstrings a bit more. Woo. Exhale, fold in half, belly to thighs, head hangs, relax the neck. And last time, inhale, lifting up, finding that flat back. Take a peek at your feet and make sure that you're not collapsing through the arches. If you are, press into the outsides of the feet. Maybe peel the toes away from the mat so you can feel the four corners touching down. And then release those toes and still keep that flat back position. Good. Exhale, fold in half, slide the hands down all the way. Relax your head and neck. And as if you're coming into that flat back, I want you to raise your arms out wide into a T, come up halfway, and now continue to come all the way up to stand, uprighting the pelvis, reach the hands towards the sky, upward hand salute. Exhale as you circle the arms wide and down by your sides. Standing tall in your mountain pose, feet plugging in, Legs actively working here. So you feel your calves separating and firming apart, inner thighs squeezing, your kneecaps lifting up off of your shins and your hamstrings, the back of the legs pressing forward. Good, put a smile on your face. We'll go through the sun salutations. We'll go through quite a few rounds. And the first round or two are gonna be a lot slower. And then we're going to start to increase the pace as we start to get that rhythm and um, feeling the body warming up slowly. Good. Let's inhale, circle the arms out wide and up, upward hand salute. Exhale as you separate the arms, fold in half, hinging from the hips, come all the way down, bending knees, coming into your standing forward fold. Inhale, you're going to bring your fingertips to the outsides of your feet. You're going to step the right foot back into lunge. Make sure you get the foot all the way back and that your left knee is stacked over the left ankle. So if you notice that you're too far forward, you're kind of in this position or the knee drops down on the back side, you might be a little too far forward, press back through your back foot even more. Good. Now look up, smile. Good. Keep that back leg lifting up a little bit more, Abdullah. Yes, I know hip flexors, huh? Good, exhale, step the left foot back, downward facing dog, plant the palms, left foot meets the right, hips high, head low. Good, then inhale, come forward into plank, shoulders stacking over your wrists. I want your hips to be in line with the rest of the body, so move your tail towards your heels, firm your thighs towards the ceiling. Good, lower your knees down to the floor, behind your hips. Flip your tail up, dip your chest and chin to the ground. So chest comes down between your thumbs, elbows to the sky, your knees, chest, chin, and there should be plenty of space underneath your pelvis for a small guinea pig to travel underneath. Good, then flatten out and smash the guinea pig, hips to the ground, tops the feet to the floor, lift your chest two inches, cobra. So your head goes along for the ride here and elbows squeeze in tight. Exhale, bow forward, curl the toes, either pushing up onto your knees or through plank, back in a downward facing dog. Look between the hands, you're gonna step your right foot forward all the way to the top edge of the mat. If it doesn't come up on its own, you're going to grab a hold of that right ankle with the right hand and hop the foot forward. You also might be doing a little bit of a toe scooch, kind of like a little caterpillar crawl, a hips down, chest lifts, looking up and smiling here. Good, exhale, left foot steps forward, standing forward, fold. Hips high, head low, still pressing into the four corners of your feet. Inhale, coming up with that flat back, arms reach wide into a T, come all the way up, upright the pelvis, Hands to the sky, upward hand salute. Exhale your arms down by your sides. Inhale, circle the arms wide and up, upward hand salute. Exhale, fold in half. Hinge from the hips, keep the weight in the toes. Bring the fingertips to the floor, to the outsides of the feet. 
Inhale, left foot steps back into lunge, hips down, chest lifts, looking up, smiling. Good, exhale, right foot steps back, downward facing dog. Inhale, come forward into plank. Keep those legs actively working. Exhale, the knees, chest and chin to the floor. Slowly guiding your chest down between the thumbs, hips are high. Hips to the ground, inhale to cobra. Heart rises up, elbows firm back, tops of feet press into mat. Exhale, down, pressing back, downward facing dog. Inhale, looking forward, left foot steps all the way, top edge of the mat, hips down, chest lifts, look up, smile. <laughs> Exhale, right foot forward, standing forward fold. Inhale, reverse the swan dive, come all the way up, hands to the sky, reach tall. Exhale, the arms down by your sides, mountain pose. Good, inhale, reach the arms wide and high, upward hand salute. Exhale, fold in half, hinge from the hips, standing forward, fold. Inhale, right foot steps back, lunge, hips down, chest lifts, look up. Exhale, left foot steps back, downward facing dog. Inhale, come forward into plank, legs active. Exhale, knees, chest and shin to the ground. Inhale to cobra, heart forward. Exhale, bow, send it back, downward facing dog. Inhale, right foot steps forward all the way, top edge of the mat. Good. And then exhale, left foot steps forward, standing forward fold. Inhale, reverse the swan dive, come up. Upward hand salute. And exhale, the arms down by your side, mountain pose. Inhale, circle the arms wide and high, upward hand salute. Exhale, fold in half. Keep the weight in the toes, standing forward fold. Inhale, left foot back, lunge. Exhale, right foot back, downward facing dog. Inhale, come forward into plank. Exhale, knees, chest, and chin to the floor. Inhale to cobra, heart out in front of you. Exhale, bow, send it back, downward facing dog. Inhale, left foot forward, lunge, look up, smile. Exhale, right foot forward, standing forward, fold. Inhale, reverse the swan dive, coming all the way up to stand. Upward hand salute. Exhale, arms down by your side, mountain pose. Inhale, upward hand salute. Exhale, fold in half, hinge from the hips, standing forward, fold. Inhale, right foot back, lunge, look up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale to plank, shoulders over the wrists. Exhale, knees, chest and chin to the ground. Inhale, cobra, heart lifts. Exhale, lower, send it back, downward facing dog. Inhale, right foot forward, lunge, look up. Exhale, left foot forward, standing forward, fold. Inhale, reverse the swan dive, come up, upward hand salute. Exhale, mountain pose. Last one, inhale, reaching up. Exhale, fold in half, hinge from the hips and take it down. Inhale, left foot back, lunge. Exhale, right foot back, downward facing dog. Inhale to plank. Exhale, knees, chest, and chin. Inhale, hips down, heart forward. Exhale, bow, send it back, downward facing dog. Inhale, left foot forward, lunge, looking up, smile. Exhale, right foot forward, standing forward, fold, relax your neck. Inhale, reverse the swan dive, come all the way up. And exhale to mountain pose, stand tall. Take a full breath here. 
Deep breath out. Another full breath, nice and wide. Feel length in your spine. And deep breath out as you root through the four corners of your feet. All right, go ahead and take a break. Let's go ahead. Does anybody have any questions? Feel free to unmute yourself, drink some water, post in the chat. How did that feel with your sun salutations today compared to last week? Anything? Nope. I feel like um, I got into the routine a little bit better after doing a couple more tries. It feels, it feels good. I feel loose. Yeah. Yeah. And it, you know, as we first get in through the first like round or two, you're like, okay, so what do I have to like put together? You're kind of like, like a Frankenstein, you know, putting all these yeah. little pieces together. And then you start to feel like it starts to flow, right? Yeah. It definitely. starts to come alive that the breathing will start to connect with the movement or even guide the movement, which is what mm -hmm. we would like to do. So cool, cool. Um, Real quick. Can I say something? Can I say something? I'm sorry, can I you know? Yeah, yeah. I just want to say like, um, when I was doing the little poses, it felt like at first I was focusing on one part of the pose and I realized I just, I just had to focus on like different parts, like my arms my legs and then it would all like come together because it wasn't really coming together at the beginning like you said like yoga I was forcing myself into it you feel me yeah you get what I'm saying yeah yeah I get That's that it. and it's going to feel like that like you're going to be feeling certain body parts are going to be demanding more of your attention but as opposed to everything coming together as one and you know in time it does you know eventually work and you put the pieces together so to you find that whole unit so yeah cool anybody else is it still difficult to get that foot forward um from down dog into lunge or is it starting to get a little bit easier it's a little easier now i feel like okay yeah, if you're still having that um, difficulty, don't worry about it. Sometimes it's just body mechanics, like of where you're placing your body. Sometimes it's actually body proportions. Um, so that, you know, maybe the proportion of your arm is a little bit different from your knee and shin compared to your upper torso. And all of these do play into each other that are going to make it easier or harder for you to be able to bring your leg forward. So, and even like the length of your thigh. Um, being able to bring that forward um, can make a difference. So um, just know that we have to be patient with ourselves sometimes. And then over time, we start to learn these little tips and tricks that can also help us, um, especially when we do have those proportion um, situations. So um, they're not problems. It's just the way that our body was made. And we just basically allow the poses to form to us compared to us to get into the poses and jam ourselves into something that doesn't feel right. So, all right, let's continue on. So um, we are going to be doing some more standing postures. So come up onto your feet, please. I'm gonna just adjust this computer so I can see you guys okay. And with this coming up onto our feet, with these particular standing postures, um, you can do these in two different ways. You can do these with your feet hips distance as we do in our mountain pose, but you can also do them with the big toes touching and the heels just slightly apart, like a sliver. Um, with this, with the feet together, this does make it a little bit more challenging. Um, and it becomes more challenging because of the balance element that comes with it, because you're having to stabilize yourself. But I find that sometimes with the feet together brings a little bit more feedback as to the engagement of your legs to make sure that you are squeezing those inner thighs and activating the adductor muscles. So it is up to you. Um, if you notice that you tend to collapse into the arches of your feet, 
this might actually be a little bit easier for you to do, or not necessarily easier, better for you to do so that you can engage through here as opposed to collapsing and then having your knees jam in, et cetera. So if we do have the knees together, then they're not going to go any further together. <laughs> okay, so feet either hips distance or big toes touching, arms down by your sides for now. I want you to inhale and circle your arms all the way up towards the sky. Now, as we reach our arms up to the sky, I'm gonna show you what the hands are gonna look like. You're gonna interlace your fingers and point through the index, but you're gonna have your arms all the way up and overhead. I know my head gets cut off a little bit here. You're gonna have your arms all the way up towards the sky, arms wrapped around your ears. You're gonna feel your front ribs pull down. So we worked on this last week with those arms coming up in the opposite direction of our ribs. See if you can imagine that there's a wall behind you so that you're not going any further back. We're just gonna be leaning to the side. So I want you to exhale, tip over to the right. As we're tipping over towards the right, I want you to feel how you're pressing into both balls of the feet. And you're gonna feel your hips travel over to the left. Good, the arms are gonna stay in line with your ears and you're gonna squeeze that bottom arm a little bit tighter into your head. This is called standing half moon pose. Inhale, lift yourself up, and then exhale, come over to the other side. Standing half moon on this other side. Again, pressing your hips away from you towards the right now as the arms and head lean over to the left. Big side stretch in that right side body. Inhale, lift yourself all the way up. Exhale, take the hands down and let them come behind you. You're going to interlace your fingers. I'm just gonna show you a little bit more of a close up here. Interlace your fingers and then glue the heels of the hands together. Okay, so imagine that you have a little marble and you don't wanna lose your marbles. Uh -huh. Okay, bring the heels of the hands together. And I want you to feel, even if you have to have a bend in your elbows, okay, for this, I want you to bring your hands away from your hips so they go back. Okay, this is gonna squeeze those shoulder blades together. Good, trying to get that opening through the chest. Now, take those knuckles down, move your weight into your hips forward, toes into your, oh, weight into the toes, lift your chest up, look up. Good, and then exhale, you're gonna move your hips back, start to tip forward, bend your knees and up so belly touches thighs and knuckles reach up and overhead. Keep the heels and the hands together. Now that might mean you have a bend in the elbows, that's okay. Keep trying to glue those hands together. Good, another full breath here. Exhale, hands come to your buttocks. Slide all the way down the back of the legs, down to your ankles, and then shift the hands to the front of the shins, lifting up halfway, either into that flat back with your hands on knees or your shins. Exhale, slide the hands down, fold in half. Bend your knees and up. Good, inhale, coming up with that flat back all the way, hands to the sky, upward hand salute until you interlace your fingers and come back into that standing half moon. Exhale to the right. Inhale, lift up. Exhale to the left. Inhale up. Exhale, hands come down, interlace the fingers back behind you again, glue the heels of the hands together. Take the knuckles back and down as you send your hips forward, chest up, exhale, move your hips back, knuckles up and away. Eventually they'll reach overhead towards the front of the mat. Relax your neck. Good, inhale, bring the hands to your hips. Exhale into your standing forward fold, tuck in. Inhale the hands to the front of the shins or your knees or thighs, flat back, halfway lift. Exhale, fold in half, taking it down. Inhale, reach the arms wide and high. Upward hand salute. And then exhale, circle the arms wide and down by your sides. Good, any questions on that before we move on? Okay, let's continue. Okay, so this next pose is chair pose. And this particular posture can also be done with either the feet together or the feet apart. My personal preference, again, is to have the big toes touching um, because that does give me a lot more feedback of the knees coming together and those inner thighs squeezing, okay? So if you know you have that tendency for your knees to collapse in, 
okay, then you might be a little bit more of a candidate of bringing your big toes together and your knees touching, okay? All right. Let's bring those big toes to touch, heels slightly spread, arms down by your sides or your feet and hips distance apart. I want you to bring your hands together, okay? Like you're about to go diving into a pool, okay? Bend your knees, set your hips back way far back and let your fingertips touch the floor out in front of you, a good couple inches or so, okay? Get your hips down as low as you can, almost like you're bringing your knees in line with your, uh, your hips in line with your knees. And then keep your knees here, separate the arms, upright the pelvis, and then bring the arms up. So we're still keeping a bend, a deep bend in our knees. I want you to take a peek at your toes. Send your knees back if you cannot see your toes. Good. Sit down and back as you squeeze your inner thighs together. If bringing your arms up into this kind of upward hand salute shape is too much for your shoulders, open your arms out wider, almost like you're coming into a V shape, okay? I want you to sit down a little bit lower, breathe in. Exhale, breathe out. See if you can sink down a little bit more into the pose. Pull your front ribs in, sink down a little bit lower. Good, another 20 minutes here. Just kidding. <laughs> breathe in. Breathe out. Good, breathe in again. And breathe out. Sink down just one more moment. Good. And then coming up, slowly release, arms down by your sides. Take a seat. Let's have a little powwow. <laughs> All right. So chair pose. <laughs> How was that? I felt the burn. <laughs> <laughs> no burn, no earn, right? Exactly. Yeah you, yeah, you felt that in your thighs, right? Yeah, um, I was like, it's working. Yes. Um, what else was happening? Um, I don't know. I, I just feel my body's just like, ah, uh, just burning everywhere. <laughs> okay, so sweating probably, your heart rate yeah. going. Uh, what was happening in your head, Annette? Um, I was just trying to keep focused and not like just stand up and give my legs a break. Okay. So you're trying to stay in the pose and not just bail out of it. And yeah. Okay. All right. Anybody else? It was challenging to keep my arms above my head. Yeah. It's the arms get heavy, right? You're like, Oh, I can't do this. Especially. I mean, like bring your arms above your head definitely increases your heart rate. And so it is a lot harder than we normally you think that we might be able to do. So it will take some time. Um, what were you thinking, Leslie, when that was happening? I just wanted to let my arms down. <laughs> okay. You're just like, oh, my arms are so heavy. You're like thinking yeah. literally of the I have no upper body strength. <laughs> yeah, it happens. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? Anybody cursing in your head? Yes, we got some nods. They're like uh, sheepish nods. Like, yes, I did that. Okay, it's normal. Okay, that post sucks. Okay, <laughs> bottom line, it doesn't feel good because we're being challenged. Or if you do like that challenge, then it's a different story, right? Um, but what I wanted to highlight about this is that chances are you might have been overreacting to the posture, okay? Mentally overreacting to the sensation that you were feeling in your body, okay? When Joel Kramer discussed in his Yoga as Transformation article, he kind of mentioned that the body, that the mind will give up before the body does, okay? And you probably were experiencing a little bit of a taste of that, right? You're noticing that your mind wanted to take you out of the posture before your body was truly able to stop, right? Or truly able to, you know, give up because your body could probably do it. If you couldn't do it, you would literally collapse to the floor, right? But it's your mind that's telling you, I can't do this. This hurts. My arms are so heavy. Why can't I keep my arms up? But if you couldn't keep your arms up, 
Your mind had nothing to do with this. Your body literally would just keep your arms up until it no longer would. You would just see your arms kind of slowly drifting down, right? What's important about this is that the mind has this challenge in that it tends to overreact to sensation that we feel. And when we feel a sensation, that's not a bad thing. In fact, most of the time we're living in this comfort zone. And this comfort zone is a place where we're just kind of on our autopilot. We're just kind of going through our life. Maybe we're in that resting relaxation place. Maybe we're just kind of going through things and not really um, being challenged, right? As Joel Kramer described in his article about playing the edge, we have minimum edges and we have maximum edges. At the very top of that comfort zone is your minimum edge to your stretch zone. So your comfort zone is down here. You're kind of easy going, everything's okay. But then you're gonna come into that place where you're going to be challenged. You're gonna be stressed in some way or another. And just know that stress is not a bad thing, okay? Too much stress is a bad thing, but stress is not because stress is what basically makes you grow. It makes you learn. It makes you uh, become stronger, more flexible, okay? That is that place of stretch, okay? You're stretching yourself beyond where you currently are, that homeostasis, okay? So when we get past that minimum, that maximum edge of the comfort zone, but that minimum edge of the stretch zone, that's basically where we're gonna find our growth and progression, okay? The very middle or the very top of this stretch zone is the very maximum of our stretch zone, that maximum edge to where we come into this place of stress, okay? So comfort zone down here at the bottom, stretch zone, and then we have stress zone, okay? Our body is literally able to handle a lot of intensity. That is that stretch zone. And that when we feel pain, that's when we're in that stress zone. When we feel injury, when we feel disease or illness, okay, that's all in the stress zone. Anytime when things are like literally breaking down, okay? that's when we're feeling that place of stress. But in the stress zone, that's that place of discomfort. That's what I was talking about the very first class, that there's a difference between pain and discomfort. Uh, and Joel Kramer describes it as pain and versus intensity. That's intensity that we were feeling, that burning sensation, that heat. We're like, oh, you know, I can barely hold, hold myself up. I can barely do this pose. That's intensity. That's just taking you out of your comfort zone. But we tend to overreact. We overreact mentally to what was happening in our body. Now, we have a choice to make these situations better because when we are overacting, most likely we're suffering, right? You guys were mentally suffering through that. And you're probably like, that sucked. That didn't feel good. I didn't enjoy my, myself in that posture. But we have the choice to actually enjoy these poses, to truly get you know, the most out of them to learn from those poses, those positions or, you know, situations that we have in life. We can change our mindset by refocusing on what we can do. Okay. Instead of what we can't, we can focus on cheering ourselves up or being that mental cheerleader and then telling ourselves, you got this, you can do it. Okay. Just a few more breaths. You can do it. You can give yourself mantras, phrases, words, something that has meaning or power for you. One of my personal favorites is I can do hard things. Maybe one that you enjoy is this too shall pass. And so you find a little bit more motivation knowing that this is not going to last forever and that you're going to eventually find that, you know, light at the end of the tunnel. Okay. So whatever it is that makes you feel better in the posture that you can get through it. Maybe it's focusing in on the breath and just breathing into the pose. But going back to that reading that we did, I had for you earlier, that, you know, the quote from Melody Beattie, that few situations can be improved or bettered by going berserk. We can't have the situation of feeling this challenge in our body 
improve or be bettered if we keep going berserk through our mind. Okay, so what we can do is control our mind, control our thoughts in a way that are better for us. And so we can have a more pleasant experience with the situation. If may is, is it going to take the intensity out of the pose? Maybe, maybe not. Okay. But that's not, you know, over time, that intensity is going to change as your body adapts to the demands of the practice, the physical practice. But what happens before that point is your mental practice. And so this is what we're trying to do. This is less of the physical body that's actually happening, that's being trained right now. It is the physical body, yes, as a benefit, but we're, we're challenging and training our mind so that we can think and do better, okay? So we're gonna do this pose again for longer. And I would like for you to see how you can mentally Put yourself into a better place. Make this posture a more pleasant situation for you mentally, for a better experience overall, okay? The pose still may suck, especially because we're doing it longer, but see if you can make this a better situation without going berserk, okay? So let's go ahead and come up onto your feet. I want you to bring your big toes together or your feet hips distance apart, arms down by your sides for a moment. Good, smile. And bring your hands together out in front of you, bend your knees, sink your hips way back. If your feet are together, keep your knees together. Good, and keep that weight back in your heels as you reach your arms up. Upright the pelvis a little bit more so you're not in this six o'clock tilt but feeling your navel pulling in towards spine, lean that weight way back. So do a, put a little bit more weight into your heels so your toes can fly up. There you go. Yes. And everybody's Abdullah. Good. Go ahead and sit down and then put that weight back into your heels even more. Breathe in. Exhale, breathe out. And just talk to yourself mentally. Okay. What do you need right now in this moment? What do you need to get yourself through this place? of challenge, that you know that it will end at some point, and that you're going to come out of this a better, stronger, more flexible and stretched person. Good. Sink down a little bit lower. Take another full breath in. Deep breath out. See if you can reach more energy through your fingertips, lengthening up. Good. And sometimes I even like to think that I can shoot confetti out of my fingertips. Good, sink down a little bit lower, reach up through those arms, pull the ribs in, breathe in, breathe out. Good, breathe in again, breathe out, sink down, one more breath here, big full breath in, deep breath out, smile, you're done, arms down by your sides. Ooh. Thumbs up if you felt like you had a better situation because you were more mentally prepared for that. Cool. Awesome. Use that in life. Okay. You're going to be presented with a whole bunch of crappy situations, but you have the ability to change that situation for the better based on how you think of it. Okay. All right. So standing at the top of your mat, we're gonna come into a few more poses before we complete here. Inhale, let's bring the arms all the way up towards the sky. And then exhale, fold forward, hinge from the hips and take it all the way down. Standing forward fold. Good, walk your feet back into downward facing dog. Hips go high, head hangs low. Bring your big toes to touch. And then inhale, raise your right leg to the sky, back behind you, down dog splits. Exhale, right foot steps forward all the way, top edge of the mat. Good. Now I want you to take a peek at your back foot. That's the left one. Okay, look at your left foot. Hop the toes forward about two to three inches. Okay, so now your hips are a little bit higher and your feet are a little bit closer together. Now I want you to bring your left foot a little bit wider. So maybe about three inches to the left. Spin your left heel down so that your left toes are facing 10 o'clock position and then keeping the bend in your right knee, 
reach your arms all the way up. Coming in two, this is known as warrior one. The positioning of the feet is our front stance position, our hips, okay, shining our headlights forward. If we imagine we have headlights at the front of our pelvis, shine and turn your headlights forward and then keep that upright position of the pelvis, okay? We may need to adjust that back foot. So sometimes we might need a little bit shorter stance, especially if we don't have um, a lot of height in our body. We have shorter legs, etc. cetera. <laughs> Okay, reach those arms up towards the sky, bend that front knee. This is called warrior one. Good. And what are you a warrior for? What are you fighting against? What are you standing for? Standing up to. Good, see if you can pull your ribs in, navel towards spine, uprighting the body a little bit more. Good. And then exhale, circle your hands down onto your hips. You're gonna straighten out your right leg from the hamstring. So I want you to move from the belly of the muscle as opposed to thinking of straightening out the knee. So it's a little bit slower process. You're using resistance, okay? Squeeze that leg straight, very nice. And now I want you to hug your inner thighs together and turn your hips forward. Yes, good. Keep that weight in your back foot, inhale, lift up. You're gonna exhale, tip forward, coming down to a flat back halfway. This is where you might want to have your block. The block would come to the inside of your right foot at the top or close to the top edge of the mat, but the hands will be directly underneath your shoulders here, okay? Now with this, I still want your weight to be back. So I don't want the weight to be forward in the front leg. I want your hips to be back, like somebody's pulling your hips or you've got a slingshot being pulled back. Okay, if you do not have the block, the hands can come to your knee or shin. And we're gonna slowly start to round the spine forward. Maybe the hands slide down to the foot or to the floor as you keep your hips facing forward. This one's called pyramid pose. Relax your head and neck. Good, keep pressing into the ball of the foot. Relax your mouth and jaw. Breathing into your back body. Bend your right knee, inhale. Arms come up towards the sky, warrior one. Exhale, hands to your hips. Inhale, straight up the legs slowly. Exhale, tip forward. Slowly let the belly articulate the way down all the way into pyramid pose. Inhale, bend the knee. Let's come in one more time. Up and back into your warrior one. Exhale the hands to your hips. Inhale, straighten out the legs slowly from the belly of the muscle. Squeeze those inner thighs together like you're wearing roller skates and you don't wanna do the splits. Good, exhale, tip forward, come down. Good, and fold all the way down, maybe the hands towards the ground. Good, from here, bend your right knee, plant the hands and step back, downward facing dog. Hips stay high and move back. And just take notice between the two sides of the body, the left and the right, noticing if there's any change in the sensation that you're feeling. Good, then inhale, raise the left leg up towards the sky into down dog splits. Exhale, left foot steps forward all the way, top edge of the mat. Right foot's gonna hop forward about two inches, that's the back one and then maybe three inches to the right. Do spin the right heel down. Toes are facing two o'clock position. Bend into your left knee and slowly rise up into warrior one. So our hips are facing the front in warrior one. Good, we're shining our brights forward. Like we're moving our right hip towards my left foot. Good, reaching up nice and tall, lengthening up through the spine. Bend deeper into your left knee. Good, breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in, find that strength from within, not only physically, but also mentally. And breathe out. Good, hands come to your hips. 
Inhale, straighten out your left leg, moving from the hamstring. Good, lift up and then exhale, tip forward. Feel free to use the block. It's along the inside of the mat. You can use the block for different heights. And that's why you can kind of progress with that. So pyramid pose here. Find that length in the back of that left leg. And then just take a peek at your right foot. If your right arch is smashing down, see if you can push into the outer right heel and the ball of the foot at the same time. It's really important that we have the toes either at one or two o'clock position and not three because that puts a lot of pressure on the knee. So if you're feeling pain in your knee, that right knee, turn the toes slightly forward. Good, bend your left knee, inhale, reach the arms up, warrior one. Exhale, hands to your hips. Inhale, straightening out the leg. Exhale, tipping forward for pyramid, just kind of flowing through this, hands come down. Inhale, bend the knee, lift the arms up, warrior one. Exhale, hands to your hips. Inhale, straighten out the leg. Exhale, tip and come forward, pyramid. Bend your left knee and step back, downward facing dog. Walk your feet forward to the top edge of the mat, all the way up to your hands, and bend your knees a lot until your hips come down towards your heels. Good, a little ball squat. Your heels might be up, that's okay. Then I want you to come all the way down onto your seat. All right, how we do? Good. Thumbs up, yes. Cool. Any questions before we move on? Nada niente. Okay, let's go. Let's bring both legs out in front of us for seated forward fold. I want you to move any of the flesh of your bottom out of the way of your sit bones. So it kind of moves back a little bit. Okay, if you know that you are that person with the hamstrings, you know, beef jerky hamstrings, bend your knees a little bit, okay? And you're gonna come into it from here, okay? You can also use your strap for this practice too. Inhale, bring your arms up and then exhale. Take your belly forward onto your thighs and then grab onto whatever's there. If you're noticing that there's a lot of space between your belly and your thighs, I want you to bend your knees. So Reem, you might wanna bend your knees a little bit more. There you go, I like that. Does that feel better on your body? Okay, there we go. And that just a little bit of a bend and then pull your toes back towards your shins. Yeah, yeah. Good, now I want you to feel everybody, wherever you're holding on to, separate your collarbones wide, like we do in our, co in our cow pose. Uh-huh, collarbones wide. Good, and now send your chest forward as your shoulder blades go back. Yeah. Good, keep that length in the spine. Inhale, stretching long through your crown. Exhale as you lower down. Good, then inhale, raise the arms up towards the sky. Exhale, the arms circle wide and down. Slide your hips forward towards your heels. Take the legs with you as you come all the way down onto your back. Good, so you're just tucking into a little ball and just rock side to side. And then bring your arms out wide into a T. Let the knees fall over to the right as you look out to the left. Full breath into your left lung. Deep breath out. Okay. 
Good, inhale, lift the knees up through center, and exhale, let the knees tip over to the left, look out to the right. Breathe into your right lung this time. Good, then inhale, lift the knees up through center. Exhale, bring your forehead up to meet your knees. Squeeze into a tight little ball. And then exhale, lower your head and shoulders. Extend the legs out in front of you for your corpse pose. Feel free to grab your towel and place it over your eyes. Relax your mouth and jaw. And just let yourself breathe. Take a full breath in through your nose. Open up the mouth, exhale, let out a sigh. Continue to breathe. And start to slow yourself down. Staying down, breathing. I want to remind you that it's just as important to find our place in the comfort zone as it is to find that place of stretch, of growth. That this place of comfort is where we seal in we absorb, we retain. And we allow this learning to become a part of us. So I'd like for you to think of those places in your life that are a challenge This can be good or bad. This can be hard or just a little bit of challenge. I'd like for you to think of ways in which you can help yourself mentally through that place. And then give yourself that opportunity to just rest.
And from where you are, start to deepen your breath. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. Make circles with wrists and ankles. Stretch the arms up and overhead, lengthening out through the entire body. Reach. And exhale, release with a sigh. Draw your knees lightly into your chest and wrap the arms around. And carefully tip over to one side. Pause for a moment. And then press the hands into the floor, extend top leg, ease your way up to a comfortable seat. And feel free to unmute yourself for the closing of our practice. Otherwise, bring your hands together at your heart center in Anjali Mudra. Bow your head softly forward. I bow to the divine light within you. Namaste. Namaste.